Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Can we hear one more time for David Albritton? I, I want to say that, you know, when we talk about say good things about Detroit, that's the best of Detroit. In our local media and our national media, the narrative tends to be slanted in a different direction. We don't see enough David Albritton's. It's a fantastic man, so that's why I'm happy to see him up here. As change makers, we have been charged to live out our passion, to live our passion out loud with energy and enthusiasm. So hopefully, as you all have learned from Detroit, if you've seen Detroit, if you, as you've experienced conference, that you've gained some inner clarity and some insight about how you too can live out your passion. See, because it's one thing to say, I am a change maker, but it's a whole other thing to say, and this is what I'm gonna change. So with a clear vision, you can develop a mission. When you have a clear mission, you can get people to understand. When you can get people to understand your mission, you can get them to care. And when you can get them to care, that's when you can get them involved because they wanna make a difference too, right? Parents, grandparents, children, the cat, the family dog, you get everybody involved. And that's what happens. So now we're gonna turn it over to our special guests. And I tell you, we have an incredible lineup of people uh, you will be moved today. These folks are change makers who use their creativity and artistic passion to define the central mission of their lives around issues of artistic activism and social justice. So the spirit we're aiming to capture is one of inspiration through their words, actions, and in some cases, a musical performance, which I'm sure you will feel deep in your soul. But as always, be sure to keep yourselves in mind because today is yours. Today is ours. So let's take it. So now I'd like to start with Generation Next. This person coming to the stage is just a dynamic ball of energy and insight and creativity. You will smile and be, and be happy. Um, our first guest is part of Generation Next. And she may be young in years, but I promise you, she is wise beyond years in terms of her experience, her passion, and her sincerity. You have seen her, if you've watched ABC, on the hit show, Blackish, as Zoe. And some blackish fans in the house? You can. Okay. This is, listen, this is conference. This isn't like church. So, you, depending on which church you go to, they clap louder in church. But this is Detroit, right? So, <laughs> we might shout dance up here in a minute. But, <laughs> but the show Blackish presents people like David Albritton. It breaks down stereotypes night in and night out and presents us in a more positive light. And so, it's proud for me to bring this young lady. And in fact, I have to say this. She just told me, I said, well, what are you doing with your summer? Oh, I'm just enrolled in a physics course. <laughs> I didn't want to take physics when I was in school, let alone in the summer. And that's what she's doing with her time. But here's what she says. She says, giving back is not something you just do when you're older. Giving back is also something you do when you're young. Giving back is something you do right now. And that's the truth. Please, please, please show your love for Yara Shahidi. Hey. Before I, you said hi back, I wasn't expecting that. This is dynamic, I like that. Um, before I get into the heart of what I want to say today, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Yara Soye Shahidi. I am 16 years old. I am half black and half Iranian. I see myself as a child of the world made possible by the union, commingling, and cross-acceptance of two cultures that developed on opposite sides of the world. I've been an actress for over 10 years, but more importantly, a budding humanitarian and activist all of my life. As many of the other speakers have and will express, it is through my art that I have purposely chosen to express my activism. Because I believe that my dharma, my purpose, and my personal work are centered around gaining equality and parity through art, inclusion, and the texturization of perception. See, it seems that many times it's difficult for the majority culture to believe that there are biases when we speak about ethnicity, sexuality, gender, race parity. How can there be parity or the belief that we are valued similarly if we are still being perceived and perceiving others as a tired stereotype or as one dimensional? In this day and age of TV, movies, and social platforms like Instagram and Twitter, media weaves an influential narrative that is often the touch point for a person's first interaction with a new concept or idea. The news, for example. 
The purpose of the news is to highlight out of the ordinary events, yet if your only interaction with the Muslim faith and community is through the depiction of the heinous actions of terrorists, a natural assumption may be that Muslims equal terrorists, but wouldn't a more plausible assumption be that some extremists become terrorists? Oftentimes, any person from a protected class, whether that be LGBTQ, women, people of color, immigrants, whatever it may be, is default the representative of their entire community, and that is a lot of responsibility. While many other people have never had the burden of living under the shadow of crusaders, colonizers, murderers, internet trolls have come to my social media to blame my relatives for terrorism upon learning that I'm Iranian. Herein lies the problem. Oftentimes, these narratives are supported by fictional stories of characters from hundreds of shows that grace your screen at any moment of the day. Many shows consciously and unconsciously perpetuate stereotypes by creating characters or casting people based on what a few in power seem to deem as believable. So if a black man is always cast as the drug dealer but rarely as the righteous, successful businessman, the conclusion is that it is not believable for a man of color to be inherently good or successful or on the side of righteousness. Good, bad, or indifferent, TV helps define our collective reality. And if a child grows up never seeing themselves representative as successful or as the hero, then they are the anomaly if they succeed and the expectation if they fail. I mean, and that's why I believe that it is my obligation and all of our human obligations as artists, content creators, painters, musicians, poets, teachers, actors, educators, influencers, dancers, people, you get what I'm getting at, <laughs> to re represent a truer a representation of the colorful world that we live in. This is me. That's me. This is me. And <gasps> surprise, this is me too. All three drawings, each from talented young artists, are based on the same image, that image, and serve as a perfect and quite literal example of the power of perspective as well as the beauty of embracing different points of view. Have any of you seen Jesse Williams' BET speech? Yes. <laughs> well, that should be mandatory viewing. My takeaway was, once we free ourselves from self-imposed branding, we can free those around us from the biases that prohibit us from truly exploring the beauty of human existence. I believe that in order to lessen cultural appropriation, stereotyping, and institutionalized discrimination, we must start the conversation about cultural appreciation that is inclusive of all people on all platforms. As you watch Blackish, and I hope you do watch Blackish, but as you watch Blackish, you are witnessing the constant conversation and work we put into the blossoming and development of my character Zoe. She is my activism through art. She is an angsty, rebellious teen, entrepreneurial at heart, academically astute, and the thread that ties her family together. One of my favorite Zoe lines being, I'm cool, plus I'm black, which is cool, so I win twice. <laughs> This complex, unabashedly proud black teenager may seem like no big deal at first, but it is through my character and characters like her that the barriers of racism, ageism, sexism, and other isms can be broken down. With intentional programming like Grey's Anatomy, Blackish, Transparent, Jane the Virgin, just to name a few, you are witnessing the realization by those in power in Hollywood of the importance of creating characters that are complex and reflective of true human nature. I, <laughs> thank you. I understand that I have no control over what people think of me, and this is not my goal. But I can and will, to the best of my ability, not only represent my cultures, but my generation. And it is more than being sassy in one episode and smart in the other. But in every episode, making the point of showing the coexistence of multidimensionality. How can I, a biracial female high schooler, be smart and driven and kind of cute? Well, how can we be here right now together as students, teachers, and entrepreneurs, people 
that all care about the importance of active volunteerism? Because we are complex in nature and we care about one another, obviously. I believe that Blackish has brought forth a realization that we aren't nearly as different from one another, from our neighbors, from our coworkers, as we may have thought. Beneath everyone's skin, identity, beliefs, and melanin is a human trying to succeed in this crazy world. Art. <laughs> Art is something that is created with imagination and skill, two things that we all possess no matter who we are. And art can express important ideas or feelings. Activism is defined as a practice that emphasizes direct, vigorous action, especially in support of or opposition to one side of a controversial issue. Art plus activism in any and all forms is a powerful statement that can spread a message that transcends the barriers and limitations of our different realities to reveal the commonality of our shared human existence. In the words of Keith Haring, I don't think art is propaganda. It should be something that liberates the soul, provokes the imagination, and encourages people to go further. It celebrates humanity instead of man manipulating it. So let's continue to go further and celebrate together. Thank you. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Um.